All right, guys, welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to be talking about the size of the dog when it comes to protection training. Does size matter? This is something that has come up quite a bit recently in my radar, at least. It's been brought up to my attention just as uh, in the form of jokes, in the form of talking. And, uh, and it got me to think, you know, a lot of people feel like very, very... Um, um, strongly about having a big dog, people that uh, are are wanting to have a working dog, especially with protection training. You see this a lot where people want big dogs. Um, not everybody, but some people do. And, uh, and it just seems to, it seems to, uh, it seems to have some sort of appeal to it, to think, you know, a working dog, a dog that does protection training, that does bite work, the bigger it is, the meaner it looks, the harder the harder it'll hit, um, the nicer it's going to look. And, uh, and it seems to have that appeal, that, that strong, um, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe manly uh, look to, to it, to have a big dog next to you to do bite work. And, and I have certain opinions about that, that I think, from the from the perspective of a of a of a decoy will be helpful to know if you're considering having a big dog so i work with i've been working with dogs for a long time and since the beginning of my career as a dog trainer the very first thing that i started doing is working with working dogs working with protection training so i've taken a lot of bites in protection training okay whether it's police work personal protection and sport work i've i've definitely put in the miles and here's my perspective on the whole thing with the big dogs i've had clients even tell me that they wanted their protection dog to be a big dog so here's the thing here's how it got me thinking about this this is this is not criticism on anybody i know some of my club members listen to this too so this isn't criticism on anybody it's actually a good conversation to have. So it uh, it started with one of my club members. He he was kind of mentioning. He's like, "Oh, I want this dog," and uh, he goes, "You know, those dogs are like ninety pounds or ninety ninety five pounds," and um, just kind of as a joke half joking, half half serious, I said, well, who's going to catch your dog? Who's going to work your dog? And he looked at me like, well, you are. And I was like, I'm not going to catch your dog. And I was like, if I do, I'm going to catch him like, you know, maybe once a week. And then we started talking about this. And this is a conversation I've had with other people. It might seem cool to have like a 90 pound, 100 pound, 110, 120 pound dog doing bite work. But here's the thing. Here's why it generally is not a good idea, okay? Even if you put the decoy aside, you might go, well, Will, you're just a wimp. You know, you don't want to work the real dogs. So we'll have other people work the real dogs. But here's the thing, okay? I don't even want a big dog. Even as a handler myself, I do not want a big dog. Um, now, right now, I have this puppy, Cinco. Awesome, awesome dog. Um, love his temperament. And at eight weeks, he was already 22 pounds. He's a big boy, big, big dog. And my biggest concern is that he will get past 85 pounds, okay? And, um, I mean, he gets past 85 pounds. It's going to be a very difficult to work. Here's why, from the handler's perspective, too. Okay, I'm going to get into detail with that. But Cinco's dad is, he's a big dog, uh, Cinco's dad is Quattro, uh, awesome dog. I've worked him a handful of times. It's a large, large dog, big bone, very muscular, very broad. Uh, but he's he's pretty compact for a large dog. Quattro is, is pretty compact, and just by looking at him, he looks like he's in the eighties range. I don't. Just by looking at him, I might be wrong, but he, I don't think he's in the nineties range. He's he's in the eighties range. And if you know if if Cinco gets to to the 80s range, 
I mean, it's not too, too bad. 85 pounds, like that's about the most I would like to have as a handler. Most, the heaviest I would like to have a dog be at is 85 pounds. So I'm not too, too concerned about Cinco being like 100 pounds, 98 pounds. I think with proper diet, uh, of course, he's he's an athlete. He is going to be a very active dog. He's not going to be a large, large, massive uh, ball of fur. So um, I think keeping him lean, muscular, healthy, um, based on looking at his dad, he's probably going to be in the 80s range. I don't think he's going to get past 85 i highly highly doubt he's going to get into the 90s um so the question that i've had for myself is well what do i do if if cinco does happen to get like 95 pounds although i highly doubt it um here's the thing i'm not gonna do bite work with cinco if he's like 98 pounds I'm just not going to do bite work with him. He'll do something else. He'll still be he'll still be active. We'll maybe do scent detection. Um but you know, I'm not going to have like a 98 100 pounds dog doing PSA. And here is my perspective from the decoy's perspective and from the handler's perspective. Here's why you don't want a large dog. Okay, so I'm going to tell you from the handler's perspective first. Because most people who want the 90-pound dog, they don't even think about, they don't even consider the decoy. So they're just thinking about themselves. So like, I want a a 90-pound dog, you know, so that it makes my dick look bigger, right? Whatever the case might be. Um, Here's why you don't want that 90-pound dog. Think of a 90-pound dog, okay? Super, super powerful dog, okay? Assuming your 90-pound dog is, is a it has the proper drive, assuming he's the right temperament, has the right drives, and is properly selected, and it's been bred for this type of work. Assuming it is that type of dog, and it's 90 pounds in the 90-pound range or more, here's why this is not good for your dog. One, and for you, one, your dog is going to get worn out a lot faster than a 70-pound dog. So obedience-wise, yeah, you can do a lot. Bite work wise, there are going to be limitations to what your dog can do. Okay, you do like a a a, a, a mid distance send. You can maybe do like two, three of those before your dog gets gassed. It's gonna happen. I've seen it. I've seen it. Okay, your dog is on a bite. Um, on top of that, sprinting to the bite, grabbing, biting, and now it's biting on the decoy. Your 90-pound dog is going to get worn out way faster than a 65, 75-pound dog. Rust, actually my other dog, my adult dog, he, um, he, he's in the, he fluctuates between like 70, 75 pounds. And, and that, I mean, he's a big dog, I think. You know, 70, 75-pound dog, he hits like a freaking truck. And even him, um, I have some limitations as to what he can do. Uh, based on just how powerful and how fast he is. But I'll get to that in a second. So your 90-pound dog, right, your 80, 90, 95-pound dog, 120-pound dog will get worn out. It's just you're not going to get that many reps per session, okay? That's number one. Even if you condition that dog, it still will not will not outperform and will not even keep up with the 70-pound dog. The 70-pound dog, 75, 80-pound dog, that dog can do several ses- several reps per session. That dog could not only do several reps per session, but when properly conditioned, that dog could even do bite work like every day. As a matter of fact, my my uh, my buddy TJ, he's also a club member. Uh, his dog uh, Braun, super super nice dog. He's very compact. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how much he weighs, but he looks like he's in the sixties range. Very nice compact dog, and. That dog does not get gas. He can go and go and go and go. Uh, obviously, we do we do stop it before he passes out. But uh, but he's conditioned and he can do bite work like every day. Like I know for sure he's doing it at least five to six times a week. He's doing bite work. He's going to like um, to like three different clubs, and he's he's training like every single day. 
And Braun being a very nice, compact dog, he's fit. He can do that. He can. It's not hard on, on him. Your 90 pound dog, you're not going to be able to do that. It's just, you're not. You're going to be able to do like maybe some bite work, like maybe some feeding it to your dog. You know, decoy's, decoy is going to have to be very understanding on that. But your 90 pound dog is. Again, it's I don't I don't care how fit your dog is. Your ninety pound dog will not get as many sessions, as many reps as your seventy five, sixty five compact, um, you know, sixty five pound compact working dog. It's just how it's going to be, unless the sixty five pound dog is out of shape. I mean, if you're comparing like a fit ninety pound dog to a sixty five pound dog that is not very fit, yeah, you can say, well, no, my dog is way more fit than that dog. Well, yeah, that dog might not be as fit as your dog at 90 pounds. But trust me, I've seen it. I work with big dogs and just don't have the long-term stamina. They're going to get worn out faster. It's just going to happen. doesn't mean you can't do bite work with them. You can do bite work with them every day. But how much are you capitalizing on on your bite work sessions with that dog? I can guarantee you not that much. You're not getting a whole lot out of that session. Okay, Uh, here's the other thing. Let's say you go, that's bullshit. That's not true. I can do this and I can do that. And I've been doing bite work with this, you know, 95, 98-pound dog, 100-pound dog every day and it's fine. Okay, next thing, as a handler, this is why it's not good for your dog and for you. It's going to be harder on your dog's joints over the long term. It's not a good it's not a good investment on your dog's body. Even if you set out on a quest to prove me wrong and go, Will is full of shit. I am gonna work my hundred pound dog every day and prove him that, that that this dog can outperform every seventy pound dog. Trust me. You compare your 95, 100-pound dog doing bite work every day to the 75-pound dog, 65-pound dog doing bite work every day, who do you think is going to get worn out on their joints faster? Okay, it's just, it's bound to, that's not even my opinion. Like that is your dog's joints taking the brunt, taking the, the heavy load of, a 95-pound, 120-pound body just running and bouncing and and landing on these joints. Over the long term, that dog will get worn out faster. Their joints are just not going to take it. So now the longevity of the, of the workload is going to be affected when you have that 95, you know, the 100-pound dog. Okay, and the heavier the heavier the dog, the more you're going to see this, right? Like, the more compact the dog, the less you're going to see this. And so, uh, to me, like an eighty pound dog, eighty five pound dog, that's already a big dog. That I mean, I'm already gonna see some of these things that I'm talking about on an eighty five pound dog. Okay, um, you get into the nineties, you're gonna see it even more. You get into the hundreds. Forget it. You you just have a monstrosity, okay? Um, I mean, it, it might be a nice monstrosity. Like to you, it might might be your baby, and and your baby does bite work, and it and it you know it, it's and it's going for its level one at ninety pound ninety pounds. But trust me, it's just go. You're going to see it. There's no way around it, okay? Every large dog that I have worked, that I have worked with. They're nice, nice, nice dogs, but you see it. It just, it, it's inevitable. If you if you're around a lot of dogs, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Now, as a handler, you don't see it because as a handler, you're just focused on one dog, your dog. You're not really paying attention to the other dogs over the long term. You're just looking at how your dog is doing. So you might not see the comparison as much as I do. But um, that's another reason, okay? So now, now that I address from the handler's perspective, here's now a little bit about the decoy's perspective. And now you might think, well, I'm not a decoy. I'm a handler, so I don't, I don't give a shit about how the decoy feels about this. But it does affect you as a handler. From the decoy's perspective, what I'm about to tell you does affect you as a handler. Okay, here's 
the other reason why you don't want that 95 pound dog, that 100 pound dog. If I have a 65, 75 pound dog, it's easier to find um, decoys to take bites from this dog. Here's why even if I have less experienced decoys, even if I have like beginner decoys, I can put an experienced, okay, doesn't have to be an amazing, but I can put an experienced 65 pound dog, 70 pound dog on that inexperienced decoy, okay? Because it takes less less workability, less, less effort from the decoy's perspective to work a 65, 70, 75 pound dog than it does to take a bite from a, a dog that is like 95, 100 pounds, okay? So, Skill wise um, and and, uh, and decoy wise, you're gonna have you're gonna have less and less and less options. You you can just go to a a guy that goes, oh, I want to take a bite. You know, like right now, I have club members that I'm very very blessed that I have club members that that are very willing to help out and that want to help out decoy wise. Or I got people coming to me that that just want to come to clubs so that they can learn how to decoy. And it's it's freaking awesome. So I can put the compact dogs on them, but if you know if I had a a hundred pound dog and one of my club members, who's an awesome decoy, I got a, I got a, a bunch of a bunch of good decoys in the club, but um, you know I have one of my club members who just now started decoying, and she's a she's very short, very very short, but she works she's decoying like very very nicely. If I had like that hundred pound dog on this new decoy who's short, uh, now I can I can already tell you we're gonna have to take this super, super slow, super even if that hundred pound dog is experienced, okay, there's a very good chance we're gonna be able to do less with that dog when it comes to more decoys. Okay. Also, now, even if we go, well, I don't care. I, just, I don't want, the, even if you're thinking, I don't want the less experienced decoys. I want the really experienced decoys. Here's from the perspective of an experienced decoy, right? You bring me your dog and your dog is 100 pounds. Yeah, I'm going to work your dog. Right? For sure, I'm going to work your dog. But I'm also going to be like, hey, dude, like, I've been decoying for a long time. Uh, I got some aches and pains. I can only do so much. See, with a 65-pound dog, 70-pound dog, I can do like long-distance scents, no issues. But like if you bring me your 95-pound dog and you go, let's do a downfield bite, long distance, yeah, sure, we'll do one here and there, but I'm not going to do three of those in a row. Definitely not going to happen. I'm going to be like, hey, no, 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 we're going to bring the distance way down. Because I'm also trying to preserve myself. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw my elbow, my shoulder, or my knee for your one dog. It's just not gonna happen. I'm going to look at my longevity as a helper too. So your dog is automatically gonna have less decoys, period. Okay. The heavier it is, the more this is gonna be the case. And I'm not saying I'm not going to work your dog. I will, but there will be some things that I just won't be able to do. I'm not going to I'm not going to want to do. Right? So uh I'm not going to work your dog every day. I'm not going to work your dog um you know every single bite even 3 times a week. I'm going to be like, "Hey, I'm going to have somebody else do it." Now we're going to go with, "All right, who wants to take a bite from this dog?" Who can take a bite from this dog? So you got some limitations here, and and this is, this is why this is uh, an issue. Rust, my dog Rust, he's um, you know he's going to be seven this year, and he's only like seventy five pounds, but he hits like a freaking freight train. Like everybody who catches Rust, they all comment on it. every time I go to a trial. I always get comments from the decoys. He hits like a motherfucker. He's just a freaking freight train. He's only 75 pounds, but he like puts 
every ounce of his body and his self into every single bite. So I have some limitations that are related to what I was talking about in that I can't just put a, a kind of a new decoy on him. I have to have more experienced decoys work him. Or if I have less experienced decoys, I have to do super, super simple short bites. I can't do long bites um, like like some of the other dogs that I know. I mean, they can do longer bites on, on a little bit less experienced decoys. But when you have a dog that, hit, like, I mean, it's fast. She's super, super fast. If you've watched some of my videos, you can even hear when he, I mean, you can hear so loudly when he makes contact with that bite suit. Um, you know, he's only 75 pounds. I think if he was heavier, he'd probably be slower anyway. But the problem is similar. You're going to have a 90-pound dog, a 90-pound, 100-pound dog. It's just going to be harder to find more decoys. Now, obviously, I'm just giving you my perspective. Maybe you work with an with a different club, a different group of people, and uh, and they don't have a problem catching your dog. Now, this doesn't apply so much to the. I mean, it does, but it doesn't apply so much to the corsos, to the mastiffs. Right? The mastiffs, um, they they're a little bit different. Like your your big dogs that do protection work, um, they like your mastiffs. They typically are a little bit slower. Like your presses. They're, you know, they can be big, but they're typically a little bit slower. I mean, some of the things that I talked about are also applicable to them. But um, but I'm talking more about like the Malinois, the Shepherds, the uh, the Dutch Shepherds that are like in the 90s range, the 90s 100-pound range. I mean, that's just, that's just too much. It's not going to be good for the dog long term. In the short term, you're you're not gonna get as much out of your training sessions as you would with a dog that is in the seventies or sixties range. You're not gonna get a, as many options of decoys. Okay. And um and that's those are just some of the problems you're going to have. Now, if you if you get a dog and it just happens to go into the eighties, which that's pretty standard for a working dog. The males are usually going to be the ones that are going to be in the 80s, right? the 80s, the 90s, um, usually. But if you if you get a working dog, and it happens to be like into the into like the 90s and the and the hundred pounds, I mean, if you get it, I'm not saying you shouldn't do bite work with it. You sh- you should if you, that's what you want to do, then you do it. We just have to be aware that these are some of the things that you might encounter, some of the limitations that you might encounter are, is, are those things, okay? Uh, possibly less training sessions, less reps per session. When it comes to the complex bites, at least, you can do super, super short bites, very simple bites, um, and then do a bunch of those. But like the more complex bites, it's going to be a little bit harder to do more of those with the larger dogs and helper wise you're going to be somewhat more limited when it comes to helpers able or willing to catch you know a, a 95 100 and something pound dog uh that that is just going full speed you might not even want that yourself anyway cuz less experienced decoy big dog uh it might look cool to see your big big freaking dog taking a, an inexperienced decoy down. But if that inexperienced decoy falls on your dog the wrong way, that could be an expensive vet bill for you. So uh, I prefer my dogs more compact. I can get a lot more out of them. So that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. Now with Cinco, again, if if he's in the 80s, I'm, I'm going to be fine with it. I'll be, I'll be happy with it, with him being in the 80s range. Um, you know, I'm going to have those issues. I'm going to have to have, uh, um, you know, only certain decos will be able to help me out with him. But if he gets like into the 90s, 100 pound range, 
just physically on his body, on his joints, is is just gonna there's gonna be a limitation there. So if that happens to be, I highly doubt it. But if that happened to be the case, I already have a plan for that. And um, if that happens, he'll just do another sport. He'll do something else. So like sell at something else. But um, yeah. But anyhow, I just wanted to bring that up. Just make sure you guys go to the YouTube channel. I'm uploading content like daily on there. I just put a bunch of videos on on gunfire, the sensitization, like the actual gunfire so that you could push play and, and have your dog listen to it. I have clatter stick sounds, shaker can, uh, like um, curtain, can curtain sounds, juggle rock sounds, stuff that in PSA at least the dogs are very, very exposed to. And other protection sports too, like the gunfire, the clatter stick that's applicable to the other sports. Uh, I just put a video on there on how to teach um, carjacking. So I'm putting a lot of content on there. Something that I, I want to do. I want to share a lot of information um, at no cost. That's why I have the YouTube channel. But anyway, see you guys in the next episode.